Splitting Hairs Free Salon Education Podcast starts now. Featuring Matt Beck, Christina Cavalcanti, Brian Hare, and Carly Wareheim. T- today's episode is powered by MinervaBeauty.com. What's up, guys? Welcome to Splitting Hairs Episode 9, a uh, free salon education podcast powered by MinervaBeauty.com. If you are planning on opening or renovating a salon or barbershop, partner with our friends at Minerva Beauty, the trusted equipment provider for over 175,000 beauty industry businesses worldwide. Scrolling their website, you'll be blown away at the wide range of design styles, color variety, and price points offered, truly suiting the equipment needs of every individual. Don't believe me? Go see for yourself. Visit Minerva's massive showroom and warehouse in Monroe, Georgia uh, to experience everything their equipment provides firsthand. Uh, They have a huge sale going on, 10% off. It's like a buy more, uh, get more sale, 10% off orders of 500 plus. 15% 15% off orders, 2,500 plus, and 20% off orders, 15,000 plus. Go to MinervaBeauty.com. Remember when I tried to read that the first episode? I thought you were going to say 175,000 hours <laughs> or years. Like when you were saying oh. like, for 175,000 years, they've been providing <laughs> salons with. But can I just say something about Minerva before we move off? Yeah. Of all the years that I've worked in salons... Never have I had guests talk about the furniture as much as they have since mm. like we switched to Made that switch. This. Like especially at least once a week. And like all my clients are pretty much regulars at this point. Yeah. The conversation that gets had about the pedestal in the sink. Yep. <laughs> like it is a constant, constant conversation of like, oh my God, I'm so glad you had yeah. this. And like, yeah. I just keep saying I hope whoever invented it is very rich on a beach somewhere because it's, yeah, it is funny how they've many made people, my life yeah. so much better. Yeah, you would think that that would be like the standard at salons at this point, but I yeah. don't think that's no. true at no. all. I've worked in so many different like shaped bowls and the cushions on the bowl that make water problems worse. All it took was just a little pedestal to hold the head up. Yeah, yeah. yeah what Brian's talking about, there's like this like pedestal thing that sits behind the head and it just keeps your head from hanging in yeah. the bowl, which is really nice. I just call it a pillow. Nice. A pillow for your head. Mm-hmm. There yeah. you go. Yep. So uh, I got Brian with me. Hey. Yeah, you do. Carly. <laughs> hey, yo. Christina. Hey. And we kind of have a special day almost. It's coming. And it's it's Brian's favorite day of the year. Oh, uh, his same. birthday. Yeah. Happy hey. birthday to uh, you. So we're celebrating that today. So let us know in the comments. Uh, just give Brian a little shout out. Hey, thanks. Um, <laughs> his birthday's tomorrow, but we're not doing the show tomorrow. So. I'm such a nerd. I got so excited when I saw online that I realized that tomorrow, my birthday, is a palindrome. Mm-hmm. So it's 4 2024. And when you read it backwards, it's still 4 2024. Oh. Oh, that's fun. Mm. Well, and it's a that's Saturday, your... which is nice. I know. Thank you, Leap Year. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't get that very often. Well, actually, you get that, what, every seven years, I guess? I Four mean. is leap year. Oh. So I don't, I, what is it, six? Or how, I, forget uh, I forget how, how that throws yeah. it off. But yeah. it's been a minute since I've had a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, congratulations. Hey, thanks. Um, make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Um, and yeah, we're going to do, again, I did talk about this, but we're going to do a and a segment at the end. So make sure, post your questions. Um, we'd love to uh, chat with you, answer anything that you, you're wondering. If you're new to the business or you've been in the business for a while, whatever, uh, just load up that chat with some questions so we can have some fun at the end. Um, let's, uh, we're going to talk about some trends, right? So 2024, I, I really feel like all of these um, online, like anytime you Google trends you get kind of everything right and we've talked about this before but i really want to go into not only the trends that they're saying i want to go through those with you guys but also now what are our customers actually asking for is kind of what do they seem excited about that kind of thing so that's where we're at with it so let's um let's bring up i'm going to bring up the uh article here um it was vogue um so at least it's a, a a bigger one. Reputable right? source. Reputable, yeah. Uh, spring's biggest hair color trends will have you stepping out of your comfort zone. So so let's play, let's show wigs. I know. So. <laughs> I know. That's the first, I was like, oh, Chantilly cream. And then I, I was like, oh, wig. Oh, a wig of just straight up white. Yeah. So they're showing Beyonce's wig. So for those guys that are listening to the show, we'll be uh, trying to describe it, but it's Beyonce's wig. 
from yeah. the Grammys. Not even the my Grammys, favorite one. Yeah. Love yeah. that for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Please don't go. Chantilly <laughs> Cream and then Red Hot. Hey. So, and then, and this is, um, now, it's kind of like a, a... I'm just curious, how do they describe that? Like, yeah, what sets that apart from just a red? That's actually where I think this could be interesting for people is if we're trying to describe it without you actually seeing it. Yeah. Like, what does it look like? To me, it has a little bit, it's a more of an RB, kind of a brown it's definitely tone to it with some gold. I feel I like I was gonna say it's it definitely I think for me falls under the more orangey red, but yeah. like a red forward one, not mm -hmm. like yeah. It's yeah. I mean it's Emma Stone. It's super rich, rich red, but definitely on the warmer side. And it does start a little deeper at the root, looks much more orangey, like deep orange. It looks like she just got it done. Just got her stained <laughs> yeah. scalp. Yep. <laughs> and then it fades a little bit towards like the end. Her ends. ends were highlighted, so yeah. yeah. That's what you get. Yeah. Just this, quick root touch up and then popped <laughs> off to the Grammys. Yeah. This reminds me of like, I mean, it's a very, this is a great salon, you know, look. Yeah. I think it can push people out of their comfort zone, but you can go demi with it. So it's not a huge, I mean, it's still a commitment because you're putting red in your hair and we all know how hard it is to get that out. But um, this is kind of a fun thing that you could do that isn't too crazy. Right. Mm, it's not yeah. a wig. Yeah. So, you know, this is actual hair. So that's, that's a good the, starting place. Like tone of your reds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it also works really well for clients that have like old highlights, mm -hmm. like to add just a demi over top a little bit deeper at the root and then pull it through the ends with a lighter tone. And then you're taking advantage of those highlights. So you kind of get a, a fresh highlighted look without all the work. So you can save a little bit of money that way too. And time as a hairdresser, being able to kind of upgrade somebody to this uh, shiny kind of treatment on their hair. Yeah. Yeah. It's an upkeep though. Yeah. You yeah. think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's very true. It's a good thing. Yeah. It is a good thing. Yeah. All right. Teddy bear brand. Okay. And here's a picture <laughs> of just her bangs. <laughs> I, I want to work for it because you don't have to work hard. I want this job. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened. And this was the other thing that we got into our discussion about is they just want to put these celebrity names. These are yeah. just all the top celebrities. So when they put their names in the article, the Google comes up. Also, all of these saying Brond, saying, you know, I think whatever. Like a couple months ago, it was like called like old money blonde or like old money brown. Like I feel like well, now sure we have expensive <laughs> brown on this yeah. list too. Yeah. So yeah. the Brond is, I, I think like, like J Lo does a bronze uh -huh. pretty good sometimes. Yeah. Um, even I mean Jen Aniston's a good one for that because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. she's never a blonde. Beyonce yeah. when she's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She looks. I mean, an, why did they say teddy bear? Right, <laughs> to soften it and make it cute and make it new. I feel like these are less for <laughs> us and more for inspiration for people who come to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mm -hmm. imagine somebody comes somebody comes in they're like, <laughs> "Give me that teddy bear." Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, think I'm back, looking for the teddy bear brown. Think brawn. back when you were younger and your teddy bears what they looked like. They were like, "Yeah, yeah. that brown that, that worn in kind of light yeah. brown dark blonde color." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a teddy bear. That's some of my teddy bears. Mine too. <laughs> His name was Peanut. It's very cute. Aww. I had Care Bears, so mine were pink and like all different colors. <laughs> That's, That's what yeah, happened. Maybe that it's tracks. a generational. <laughs> it's a generational. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the next one, Vibrant Silver. No way. That's not a wig. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Yeah. I love Jane Fonda, but at her age, she did not have hair that full. And yeah, she admits it. Is it is pretty full, but... Maybe there's just pieces. But she, she fully admits it that she's a wig girl. Like, she'll oh, come she out does? and, like, no makeup, no hair. And, like, this is what I actually look like. She's been hilarious for years. After, yeah. like, award shows showing her, like, I didn't know taking she'd... all the crap off. And it's like, and here I am, just a yeah. normal old lady. Mm. Wigs are so good. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, we don't really know. We I, don't. I, I mean, watch enough Drag Race. Funny if it I wasn't. know that's a wig. Okay. <laughs> That's one thing you'll get good at. I'm trying to get Carly in <laughs> yeah, the drag Brian's, race. Yeah, Brian's already trying to cancel his client so he can get home and watch the finale of <laughs> yeah, Drag that's Race. That's it. Tonight. I got to catch it. Isn't there someone from Philly in the final that's three, right? That's trying to go to. Yeah. Like well, the watch party. Saf Safira? Safira. Yeah. yeah. I've seen her. She's so good. 
Yeah. I And another one of the queens that I love and knew uh, in, in Philly has been putting, after they've been going on air, like she was the one that made all these huge elaborate gowns and it's just really cool. Like it's neat to see people that mm -hmm. I know and honor their art get such a huge platform. It's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. It's cool. We should watch that show. I know. We don't really watch a lot of shows. Like it's like I know, adding but that, add it to the queue. I know. With all that free time you have. <laughs> Actually, picking shows might be the most annoying thing there is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it really is. It seems wow. like such I a waste of life. time. <laughs> it's such a waste of time. Like when I get down, when I finally sit down, like I just want to like not not think. Yeah, and I just I feel like I have to think so much to pick a show. But it's a commitment because then you get invested in the show and you have to. Yeah. There's so many shows we've started. Although, so many great shows that we have started that we <laughs> didn't finish. We, I got can, to like the last I can recommend some terrible ones. Like this week, I was texting Carly. <laughs> just, I was like, I tried this one. I got halfway through. Not for me. Just to fall asleep. Couldn't too. do it. Nope. <laughs> oh, that would make me so mad too. Which Did reminds not want that me, in my brain. I keep seeing, um, what is it? Um, something Stalker. I don't know that one. On Netflix. It's a, and the guy who was being stalked mm -hmm. is actually the actor. Oh. oh, that's wow. what I read. Meta. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Art imitating life. Let's see how that ends. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, expensive brunette. There it is. We've seen this one. Yeah. And it's always Haley, I feel like. Yeah. Why is it expensive? You know why? <laughs> because everybody that wants a brown but doesn't want to, they say warmth. Yeah. But mm. there's a ton of warmth and brown mm -hmm. all browns most browns <laughs> yeah. um and they, but they want to see the flecks of gold but yeah. not orange no. right because it's expensive to figure that out <laughs> yeah <laughs> that earring looks expensive it's expensive yeah. to have people i think look at it and not see the orange mm -hmm. right i mean it, what i see like that does not look like hair it looks low maintenance. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes it mm -hmm. expensive. Know, like yeah. make it still um, shiny and brown, but, but no not, orange. Yeah. Remember the client you just said, you're mm -hmm. like her hair. I, And then, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks, I, I like, I guess I get it. because lighting and light bulbs. Well, yeah. 100%. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> but like this, you know, I would interpret this as something that looks effortless. I don't get my hair done. I just get to look like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's probably how I would describe that brown. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I wonder how much of that is her natural. Cause I know that like, she obviously did a big chop and she was blonde, but I think she was more of a rooted blonde. So I wonder if they like, like the grow out. I want to say yeah. none of that's natural. Really? Like the more that I watch movies and stuff, mm -hmm. like you can, you can spot under professional lighting like that yeah. what natural hair looks like. It it just, it doesn't have the vibrancy. Like that is such a gorgeous color at her root. Like if you mm. look over the top of the head there, no one gets to grow that and have that face. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She's pretty. And for the sake of our jobs, let's just say that's not natural at all. Yeah. yeah. You definitely have to come in here yeah. to get that done. <laughs> <laughs> and it's expensive. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to take four times. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was a joke. Um, is that it? Yeah. Wow. No Brown, haircuts? blonde, Well, that color? It was bronze. just one article. I mean, huh. I thought we could talk more about anything that you guys have seen come yeah. through or any big changes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You have anything? Yeah, of course. <laughs> my guys don't aren't really changing much. You just look in my direction and I'll talk. There you go. Uh, <laughs> well, I got it. Listen, I got to nerd out for a hot second because I saw the outline. It's like, oh, your hair trends and all that. My favorite hair trend this week uh, was on my new favorite show, X Men '97. Oh. Uh, they took a very beloved character, Storm, right here on my arm. In case you're watching the video. And she, this whole season has had like this kind of mohawk that people have had issue with. And in this last episode, she overcame her inner demons and flew into the sky and grew this beautiful head of gorgeous goddess long hair that is just so inspirational. Very cool. Is there a, a cartoon? Kid, yeah, I'll show it to you. I'll, I'll, it's like a minute and 20 second clip on Twitter. It's so good. Because when I was a kid, like that was my inspiration that made me fall in love with hair was these comic book depictions of 
you know, these female superheroes who were just what part of what made them so amazing was this glorious hair. And to see such a cool representation of that on the cartoon this week was it, it made me happy. That's cool. Okay. Good job, showrunner Bo DeMaio. Thank you. I know someone who could play her in if the next X Men. Hey, it's coming. Yeah. Put their name out there. Um, MCU's looking. Jade Cargill from the WWE. All right. Her whole thing is like Storm. Like she's got the white hair, she's super fit. I love it. Yeah. So that's my favorite non reality hair trend because it's okay. inspirational this week. Uh, but realistically, I think what I'm seeing so much of, which kind of, I guess, could fall into some of those categories from that article, I'm seeing a lot of my guests that are wanting dimension, but wanting it way more subtle than we've been doing for the last couple of years. Like for the last few years, it was, you know, the, the hard money pieces that stand out. It was like really, I don't want to say calico, but like a really big difference in the lights and the darks of their dimension and people are now coming in and wanting, not necessarily to go dark, but just have there be a far smaller window between their highs and lows, but still keep dimension. So that's been fun. Like it's something new. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. How like are you going it. about it? Uh, like yesterday with my one guest, I did, like it was a matter, because I also had to do it like on a you know fixed amount of time because I had other clients, but... It was because I personally am not a big fan of doing low lights that are darker than your roots. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't think that looks as natural. Yeah, are you doing like baby hot, baby low lights? Right. I, I, so what I <laughs> like with her yesterday, I like I, I dropped her base color down like a half of a level. So it was darker than what's already in her hair. And then... I painted, I just hand painted some like heavy highlights in some important spots and then took the base color and painted around them and between them. Mm -hmm. And then I toned her with something that was only like, I want to say maybe one to two levels lighter than what her base color is so that it brought the highlights way down into the same family. And I was, I was super stoked about it. She was just happy because, you know, I, I do her hair and she's happy, but I was like, damn, that looks really good. <laughs> Is it more of a natural? Um, yeah. Like kind of that? Like they still want dimension, but they want more natural. Like to go off of- Like a natural highlight kind of? Yeah. Like you mentioned the, uh, what was it? Old Money Blonde. Yeah. That, it's it's more that kind of thing. Something that doesn't look like a lot of upkeep. It doesn't look like it falls into a trend per se, mm, mm -hmm. but still has like eye-catching dimension to it. Okay. Just not as bold. Okay. I've noticed that guys, so like I cut a lot of guys there and I've noticed that a lot of them don't want a part anymore. Like that's something that seems to be like a lot of guys were wearing kind of deeper parts or a hard, hard part. Parts, yeah, yeah. Like, um, and that's probably been for a while now. It has now that been, you're but saying I'm that, saying, I'm, yeah. now what I'm I've been noticing, it. I don't, yeah. I don't but know. Older guys, you. it mm -hmm. was what I'm saying. Like, because younger guys have been wearing that messy mop thing for a long time now. Mm -hmm. But like, so I feel like it's starting to transfer into my Your older old clientele. Kind of want they're that. Like, wait, the want the to look younger like their kids. 20, yeah, well, or like the twenty you know, year olds. Twenty year olds yeah. that used to do that, and they're not. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, I don't know about you, but I'm noticing a lot of my male clients are growing their hair longer. Like we're using like the ones that we used to do, like the nice tight fade and then messy top or part or whatever. Now we're getting longer fades on the side. I'm working several guys through growing their hair long. And yeah, I mean, I'm into it. It's kind of coming back to like when I first in like 2005 time frame cutting guys hair, like you didn't really do a tight fade. They liked even texture on the sides a little bit, but it was still a fade, I guess, whatever, like a tape, like whatever. Yeah. Um, but, but now uh, it's like a four to a five. Now they're asking like scissor over comb work more than clipper work. Like they want that like. All right, Carly. Little, little yeah. Now like, it's your time. time. <laughs> Maybe more like. Um... <laughs> Carly's going to be a barber. Like, Whoa. All right, you can have them all. Um, <laughs> kind of going back to what Brian said about the female client that he had maybe more natural. Yeah. Like again, like, like yeah. not just freshly cut. Maybe yep. you guys are like, I want it look lived in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Grown out. A for bit. sure. And I'm here for that. Like, yeah, that's less work. Do you <laughs> I, feel like it's easier? I mean, it's, the same, it's the same amount of work, but it's less, 
of like the the sculpting okay. and more just like more forgiving. Yeah. Well, also for them, <laughs> like this is how to make it look like you don't have to do anything and you mm. just get to look like this. I would rather my more work be on like more texturizing techniques and all of that than trying to blend a line. You know what I mean? Mm. Like that's kind of yeah. where I'm at. So I, for me, it is the same amount of work kind of like time wise, but it's more fun work for me. I yeah. Thought. Like I have a couple of guys right now. One that just jumps to mind. His haircut is all about the shape that I need to create. Like he, he has this tip curly hair. No, like there's a wave to it, mm. but he likes this sort of like early 2000s rockery kind of mm. not really a haircut, but mm -hmm. very sculpted. And so that's been fun for me because I have to go through his hair so thick too. So like you really have to map this out. And in this part of the head, I have to do some concave layering. And over here, it needs to be convex layering. And it's, I mean, we finally nailed it after two or three tries, but it's its neat. because Does he use product? Oh, yeah. Okay. He uses Days of Dirt, actually. Okay. I was going to say, you know, like some guys want a look, but they don't use product. Oh, no, he's into it. Like, like this, it was, the the onus was fully on me mm -hmm. to figure out how to create a shape out of a hedge. <laughs> <laughs> it's like topiary. <laughs> But it's fun because like you get to use all the the tools in your toolbox to mm -hmm. on one haircut. It's not just like not to downplay anything, but it's not just going through and whipping through with clippers. Like I have to map out, you know, section by section of this head. It's not even a full quadrant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fun. All right. Do you so have anything? Trends seem to be um large. split dye, color block, color. I feel like I see a lot of in like my feed. Okay. Um, Split then, die is what? Like half. Like half and half? Half and half. Yeah. Um, and I think that's more of like your like early 20s yeah. age group. Um, but I see a lot of it on like my Instagram feed. Okay. For sure. Yeah. I think you one, just did some too. I did, yeah, I just did some. Well, what I've been like, just to blow up spot a little bit, lately I've seen Carly do so many really really good foils on people that come in and like they come in with dark hair and leave with this gorgeous natural blonde like you're just you've gotten so good at just like the patience that it takes <laughs> to not be like well they can't see this part of the head let's just do like three foils here <laughs> like she'll go through and just so meticulously create this look it's it's been very impressive thank to you watch. thanks yeah. that is a good point to bring up about hair and just being good at it is the amount of patience that you have to have. And I, and as you get older, patience are, you have to balance out where the patience goes. I think part of the reason Carly's got that patience is because she's not sitting there yammering their ear off. Like I do. Yeah. yeah. yeah so no, she can <laughs> save that patience for the work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am not like, I'll talk to you after I'm done foiling like I and I'll say you know like hey like I we have a lot of work here to do like I'm just gonna get to it because I know myself if I start talking it you're gonna be here for like three extra hours so <laughs> yeah um Same. and another Same. thing that goes on like <laughs> with the patients if like I, I've had to move people around or like come in on a Saturday because you know say they can't get here until like four o'clock I want to give them what they want, but I also don't want them or me to be here till like 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, yes, I have patience, but. And self-awareness. Um, yes. <laughs> she has patience nine to five. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and she got realism from her mom. Yes. <laughs> like reality. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Whoa. So, um, we're going to do some Q and A. We're going to do at least one. Um, <laughs> Answer the hell Q out of that question. and A. And uh, if you guys, but if you have questions, please post them in the chat. Um, it's so funny. The internet like uh, is also just getting older. And like, I feel like back in the day when we used to do this, there would be so many people online and like asking questions, but we didn't do it on a Friday either, which I think is part of the struggle. Yeah, like people of are busy right now. Hopefully Probably people are doing working hair. at almost 11 o'clock on Friday. But um, all right. So Mevo on tour, uh, Mevo is the sponsor of the show. 
Uh, so Mevo on Tour, hosted by Mevo Salon and Spa Software, is an in-person series of beauty and wellness business conferences spanning major U.S. cities in 2024. Uh, they've already been to Fort Lauderdale, uh, but they have a few other ones coming up, New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas. Um, I'm going to be, I, they actually just sent me an email. Um, they want me to do like a 30-minute 30, 30 uh, social media like talk, I guess. Um, John Harms is going to do uh, some of it, or like an hour, and then I'm going to do like a half an hour, I guess. Um, oh, like at, at it? At the New York oh, conference. That's cool. Yeah. So uh, you guys can get your tickets. Go to uh, Mevo.com slash Mevo dash on dash tour. Um, again, that's not fully confirmed because I haven't even wrote back to say I can do it, but I do. Um, I probably will be doing it. So um, get your tickets, New York City. And then there's also Los Angeles, Chicago, and Dallas coming up uh, this year as well. So go check it out again, Mevo.com slash Mevo dash on dash tour. I'll do the Los Angeles one. Okay. You can fly me out there. All right. <laughs> I can talk for a half hour. Uh, a half an hour actually seems a little like, like what do you, like it's, it's not a lot of time. I used to worry about that. Like when I was trying to, when I was auditioning to become an educator, they were like, you have to give a 20, 30 minute presentation. I was like, how am I going to fill that? And then before I know it, I'm getting like, then you've got five minutes left. <laughs> like, and I'm like my still introducing myself. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> That's the biggest thing that I yeah. learned from that process was that, that you I talk about yourself? <laughs> never need to worry about filling any block of time. Yeah. You more have to worry about running over yep. and not like... How do you teach social media in 30 minutes? You know, but you just inspire a little bit. Whatever. But. Oh, how? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Um, I don't know. Is that the trivia uh, question? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's that. We're all, gonna, right. all right. We're going to do some trivia. Ooh. <laughs> yep. Like What's the score? It's been a while since we did trivia. I, I Isn't it one to one to one? Or you have two? To zero. I think I only... To zero. <laughs> I, didn't I, even, to I zero. remember Carly's score. I didn't even add Carly in there. <laughs> I don't... I forget Great. if I have one or two. So much I faith. One. I've got two, I think. You have two. You have one. I have one. You have zero. There we go. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> so Carly has zero. <laughs> Does Christina have two? I'm going to get zero tattooed on me. Or was that an assumed second point because she stumped us? No, she has And took two. umbrage with the oh, fact wait, that she didn't get a point for it. That's what it was. Because if you stump us, uh, yes. you get the point now. Yes. I do? Yeah, but not last time. So you have you have one. It's one to one to one you to zero. You guys just want to cheat. <laughs> she, it, was, it, it, can, it happens now, but not last time. Well, because we just made well, the rule. Yeah, we figured it out last time. You invented Go back the to rule. the previous episode. There was a really great throw down discord about it. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> These are so kind of lame. I don't even know. That's fine. Let's, <laughs> Car- Please be Carly's lame. Like, Please. We got to get Carly on the board. <laughs> um. Here it is. <laughs> I'm ready. No, stop. I need a buzzer. Yeah. These really aren't... Uh, Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> We've never made it this far in the uh, trivia song before. Yeah, good thing it still slaps. Still slaps. <laughs> so this one's about beards. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> is it why is it itchy? Carly's days. <laughs> I don't have oh, one. I know that okay. <laughs> Ancient Egyptians often wore false beards as a sign of leadership. This included designing false beards for men, women, and what other creature? I'm going to say cats. Cats? Ancient. It was ancient Egyptians, right? Mm-hmm. They were obsessed with cats. <laughs> Mummies? <laughs> Mummies aren't creatures <laughs> to them. <laughs> Pharaohs? What is it? Cows. Oh. Cows? Yeah, there's a link between this and religious belief. The worship of cows, cows has played a major Egypt? part in many ancient cultures stretching from Egypt to India, arising originally from the vital role that cattle played in the continuance of life for ancient peoples. Oh. Huh. Yeah. 
I apologize if I offended anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't think a cow was a creature though. But I've, I'm just trying to think of Maybe like all the hieroglyphics that I've seen. Like I don't ever remember seeing a cow, cow. and like walk like an Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> Learned something today. Well, Christina got that point. Yeah. yeah. Congrats. Kudos. Yeah. I said I needed more time for a question, <laughs> and you all said no now. And I just You've gave had you the one. A month. Well, it's good. <laughs> it's good for you then. I'm sorry. You nailed it. Hey. <laughs> that was your job, and you did it well. Three. I have three. Well, mm. oh, two. I you have, have two. two. Two and a ghost point. Do yeah. we have to go through what we all have again? <laughs> Carly's got zero. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right. Before we do the wheel, is there any questions? We only have a few minutes, uh, but literally a few minutes. Um, so Kim Jackson asked, do you always leave gloss glaze on for 20 minutes? Like shades EQ minimum of 20. I always like to think we should follow manufacturers recommended use question. Go. Um, so I would take the porosity of the hair into consideration. Um, but I like to walk away and leave it for at least I like seven, eight minutes, come back, check it, and then go from there, I would say. Yeah. I don't. Like, I, I should. Uh, not, no, let me take that back. I will pick a toner based on the time that I have to give on what I can do in about 10 minutes. So if I'm looking, like I'll grab a slightly darker toner if I need it to do more work on the wet hair. Like if it's highlights and, you know, toning some highlights and I need like some of that, you know, warmth taken out, I might pick something that's a, a level darker than I hope it ends up so that it can get the job done in 10 minutes. Yeah. I, I think it's good to watch it um, if it's a toner. If it's like to create that red hot, look or whatever oh yeah I'm oh, really yeah, full yeah. time then we're that. doing manufacturer you know same with like um root melts root taps like i leave them on for yeah. the full 20 for sure yeah yeah but yeah definitely with a glo like a, a highlight you really got to watch it because you, you never know how it's going to take yeah. um so i don't think that's in the manufacturer recommended glo like usually toning on wet hair, like there's no rules for that in the paperwork, I yeah. don't think. I mean, because it, it varies. Yeah, it varies. They wouldn't be able to write that down. So is there any other ones? Um, I did see That's one. A good question. And I, mm -hmm. I can't see. Um, mm, okay, so someone asked what Nicola is asking best social media tip, if you have one. Um, show feet. Don't be afraid. <laughs> show feet. <laughs> <laughs> don't be afraid to post often. I think posting, as long as you feel like you're giving something to the other person. So two tips. Make sure whatever you're posting brings value to somebody else and not yourself. So, and then most of the time. And then um, post often because platforms, platforms aren't going to show your stuff to everybody. Um, but the platforms do love it when you are posting all the time and using their platform. So it's part of the algorithm for them to be like, this person's using this a lot. Um, and then they're going to take into consideration, do a lot of people react well to it? Um, and that's going to come from, are you bringing value to the person on the other side? So just think about the person you're, you're saying it to. Think about not wasting people's time on the other end because it is a person looking at it. Um, Don't overthink it. Just post it. Yeah. And post. All right, um, wheel. We got to spin the wheel. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do it with my feet. So if you would like to spin the wheel and you are a professional hairstylist, then comment, I want to spin in the chat. First one to comment spins the wheel. What do we got on the wheel? On the wheel, we have Mevo, a ticket to uh, upcoming uh, show. And then we've got stuff from our online store, Shop FSE. If you're looking for combs, scissors, clips, razors, anything, go uh, check out shopfse.com. And then MinervaBeauty.com is giving away, I think, still a Theragun because they haven't told me anything different, uh, which is awesome. And then uh, Formulate.co, uh, custom formulation for your hair and skin. So... Susan S. says, I want to spin. She's the first one in there. All right. I don't think she's spun before. I feel like her name sounds familiar, but 
All right. I'm sure there's a lot of Susan, but <laughs> S. <laughs> All right, Susan. Wow, that was a good spin, Brian. <laughs> it's allowed today. Formulate. Nice. Sweet. Susan, that's a that's a killer gift mm -hmm. because you get to go on to formulate and uh, create your own custom formulation and then you get it for free. So that's awesome. It really is super fun. Like yeah. I enjoyed doing it. I got my friend to do it. It's it is really fun to kind of design your own shampoo and conditioner. Yeah, and you get to pick your scent and talk about all the things that are going on with your hair, uh, and then you know you get this custom formula, and then. From that, you get to react to it. So if you start using it and maybe you don't like the scent or maybe it's not lathering enough or whatever, there's like everything. You can talk to the chemist through the app and they change your formula. And then on your next one, it'll be even better than the first one. So it evolves with you. It's a pretty cool technology. So uh, email me, Susan, uh, matt at freesaloneducation.com. Just put wheel winner and then uh, your information. I'll forward that to formulate and they'll send you a code to get your free formulation uh happy birthday thanks um i hope you enjoy your weekend me too going crazy in philly hey if you see brian out say happy birthday to him and you will see me out because <laughs> so it's funny tomorrow like my friends are like what do you want to do and so we're just going to brunch and they're like where do you want to go and i said i really don't care where we go my only request is that we get really dressed up mm. and they're like oh cool and i was like no i mean like uncomfortably dressed up like <laughs> i want the other people in the restaurant to be like are they are, we, mar are, are they are they famous like, <laughs> oh. are they going to a wet are we underdressed like i want it to be talked about so i'm very excited about that that's fun what are you wearing tbd okay. i okay i started laying out outfits i've got i went to the dry cleaner this week i bought new clothes this week so i i still don't even know yet i'm gonna wait and see what the vibe tells me tomorrow but this nice. will be posted on your story right oh, so it'll, you'll, you'll <laughs> so follow brian Hairstyle. Yeah. <laughs> Follow Carly. Hair by Carly C. Us, everything at Free Salon Education. Do you have, I have, I'm wondering this, do you have allergies in the city? They're not as bad. They're not. They no, go away. But then when you come to the woods, I mean, here, they don't go away, but, but they're, they're not definitely as bad. like amps up as I'm okay. heading to as work. As you're driving in. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much uh, for following us. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, go check out freesaloneducation.com. We've got a ton of stuff, free masterclasses. Uh, tools and products and all that and uh, make sure you support all the sponsors of the show appreciate you guys uh and we'll see you on the next one bye bye, bye.